thank you very much, Mies. Uh Good morning, everybody. My name is Nina Gudet, and I would like to welcome you to this presentation about the relationship between white balance test and single leg hop performance measures. How many in this room have already experienced a sports injury? Please raise your hand. Okay, keep your hand there and have a look around. I think the majority of the people in this room have already experienced such an injury. Well, actually, in the Netherlands alone, 1.6 million sports injuries have been medically treated in 2011. And did you know that the risk of encountering such an injury increases with increasing physical activity? Physical education teacher education student, or also in short, PT students, are exposed to a considerable number of intracurricular and extracurricular sports activities. Several studies have shown that they have an injury risk of 0.85 to 0.86 injuries per student per year. The most common injuries are affecting the knee, the ankle, and the lower leg. These injuries can have detrimental effects on their study progress. They can lead to absence from classes, delayed examinations, and ultimately a study delay. Not to talk of all the long-term consequences such injuries can have on their career. In light of this, it seems important to identify at-risk student at the start of the study program. This can be done by screening tests, where the results can be used to create prevention programs in order to minimize the number of study delays and dropouts. One of these tests is a Y-balance test. This is a frequently used and reliable uh, screening test, uh, which is performed uh, while maintaining single leg stands, as you can see on the right picture here. And then the participant is asked to perform an open chain movement in three different directions. Several studies have shown that if a participant has more or equal to four centimeters right-left asymmetry in the anterior direction of the Y-balance test, this person has an increased risk of injury. However, the Y-balance test is performed in a controlled manner and doesn't really involve any jumping or landing tasks, and therefore may not mimic the requirements of sports such as basketball or gymnastics, where a lot of these jumping and landing movements are required. The single leg hop tests are performance-based measures, and they actually expose the lower extremity to more sport-specific loads. Up to date, they mostly are used uh, in the rehabilitation of ACL injuries in order to determine when a, an individual is ready to return to sport after such an injury. Up to date, not much evidence is available regarding the relationship between those two measures, and therefore, the first pur purpose of this study was to provide correlational data uh, involving the lower quarter Y balance test and the single leg hop tests in order to see if it may be necessary to perform both or if it may be enough to just perform one of the two tests in a pre-participation screening in order to get an accurate insight into an athlete's functional abilities. The second purpose of this study was to determine whether there's sport-specific differences between people that score better and those who score worse than the cutoff points of four centimeters that I was talking about earlier. In order to answer these two questions, a quantitative study was performed with first-year physical education teacher education students at the Fonti Sporto School. All measurements were taken according to a previously set up protocol and with the participants, as you can see on the picture, in comfortable sports clothes. On these pictures, you can see the performance of the Y-balance test. Uh, you can see that single leg stance is maintained while an open chain movement is performed in the anterior on this picture, posterior medial, and posterior lateral on the third picture direction. On this picture, you can see the four different hop tests that were selected for this study, namely the single leg hop for distance, the six meter timed hop, the triple leg hop for distance, and the crossover hop for distance. This test was performed with a participant in athletic shoes and also here, as also for the Y-balance test, the participants kept their hands on their hips. 
In order to answer the first question of this study, uh, the Spearman's correlation coefficient was used. To make it simple, this test can be used to um, investigate the strength of a relationship between two variables. So the closer the number you get is to one, the stronger the relationship is. The stronger this, uh, the closer the number this is to zero, the weaker the relationship between the two variables is. So as you can see on this table, when correlating the anterior and posterior lateral reach directions with the single leg hop and the single leg triple hop, negligible to weak correlations were found. When correlating the posterior medial direction and the composite reach score of the Y-balance test with the single leg hop and the single leg hop test, slightly higher but still weak correlations were established. In order to answer the second question of this study, an independent Kruskal Wallace test was performed. This test is used to check if there's a significant difference between multiple variables. Um, in this study, uh, therefore, the, cat the participants were divided into three categories of sport. Uh, so people engaging in no sports, not engaging in any sport actually, <laughs> participants engaging in sports involving a lot of jumping movements, and participants engaging in sports not involving any jumping movement or just minimal jumping movements. Furthermore, the participants were divided into two ca uh, categories, either scoring higher or equal to four centimeters on the anterior reach direction of the Y-balance test, or having a lower than four centimeter asymmetry in the anterior di direction of the Y-balance test. In total, 23 out of 58 participants had more or equal to four centimeter asymmetry and the in the anterior reach direction of the Y-balance test. This means that according to literature, 40% of the study population had an increased risk of injuries. However, no sport specific difference could be found between the two groups. To my knowledge, this has been the first study investigating the relationship between the Y-balance test and the single leg hop tests when performed at the same moment in time. The negligible to weak correlations may be explained by the different biomechanics that are used during jumping and landing tasks compared to squatting tasks. The Y balance test, which is basically a single leg squat, mainly requires the control of the lower extremity in the sagittal plane. However, when performing the hop test, the lower extremity muscles additionally need to provide a greater ability to produce power and movement during takeoff and landing phases. Despite the findings of this study that there is no sport-specific differences, when looking at the literature, it seems clear that sport-specific differences exist. The absence of the significant uh, difference in this study may be explained by the fact that the neuromuscular system of the uh, physical education teacher education students may have adapted to a multitude of functional tasks through their experience in engaging a lot in a lot of different uh, sports activities during their classes, actually. Additionally, a lot of the participants of the study have indicated that they do more than just one extracurricular sport. So they didn't just do soccer, but they did, for example, soccer and, um, and uh, cycling, which, is then, uh, which was then just um, classified into one group. Therefore, the cl uh, classification into three groups may not have been appropriate nor representative for their study population. Due to their affordability, easy administration, and the minimal requirements of material, both the white balance test and the single leg hop test could be easily integrated into a pre-participation screening, such as at the sport over school. But they could also be integrated in sports club and on the sports fields in order to act on a broader scale to prevent injuries. The negligible to weak correlations that were found indicate that it may be important to perform both tests in order to cast for a wider net of potential deficits that hinder an individual to safely participate in sports. The two tests could also be integrated into the physiotherapy practice, not only to screen, but also to objectively follow the a patient's progress throughout rehabilitation. The next step to take is to determine gender sport-specific and position-specific cutoff points for injury risk for both measures. 
Also, normative data should be established related to these variables. It is also very essential that the ability of the hop test in predicting injury is further investigated because so far only two studies have been conducted on this matter. To conclude, the results of this study uh, indicate that it may be important to perform both the Y-balance test and the single leg hop test in a pre-participation screening in order to get a more thorough picture of potential deficits that hinder a, an individual to safely participate in sports. Furthermore, no significant sport-specific differences were found between scoring above and uh, or scoring below cutoff points for increased injury risk on the Y-balance test. However, these results should be put into question and further research needs to be conducted in order to refute this theory. The former figure skater Katarina Witt once said, when you're young, you don't think very far ahead. You think in terms of the next day, the next week, the next competition. You don't think uh, about injuries that could threaten your long-term health. Well, hopefully with the screening that we performed at the Sportogo School, the young PT uh, physical education teacher education students now um, are more aware of um, the effects injuries can have on their career and what they can do to prevent them. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah? Um, yes, we did. I think the biggest limitation of the study was that uh, the lack of experience of the four different raters or assessors that took the measurements. Um, we uh, all practiced a total of 10 hours um, with each one with a specific tool. Uh, however, that was not supervised by an expert and we, all, we got our information through articles and uh, videos. And um, there's been studies performed that show that the, both tasks can be reliably performed um, and also with minimal experience. However, in that study, um, they had supervision uh, during their uh, practicing, they had supervision of an expert. So this was not the case in this study. Uh, and the second limitation, bigger limitation, I, in my opinion, was that we couldn't control um, the sports activities and the schedules of the different students, uh, and that might have influenced the results of the testing. As if, yeah, sometimes students came in, then they came from a, an athletic class of two hours of sprinting and athletic tasks, and others came in from a two hours lecture. So the muscle fatigue might have influenced and um, led to decreased uh, reach distances and hop distances. Yeah. How many subjects participated in your study? Um, in total. Can you, uh, can you repeat that question oh. in the microphone? If it works. No. Okay. How many subjects participated in your study? So uh, I shall repeat it. How many subjects <laughs> did she study in her? Uh, uh, participated in my study. That's it. In total, yeah. um, <laughs> there were 79 participants that w came to the to the testing. Uh, however, I could just include 58 in my study due to my in an exclusion criteria. Um, I have to say that it was a bit disappointing because there was a potential number of 190 that could have come and we really did everything to make them come to our testing but uh, unfortunately it was not motivated to, uh, it was not possible to motivate more people to in to join even though it is an important thing and I think also the sport home school can take um, a lot out of the results we found as I said 40% of the participants actually had an increased injury risk so is there any screening test already being done at the sports home school? Um, they have a medical screening at when before they start the program, and the idea is actually to also integrate these kind of tests into um, into that medical screening in order to see how the injury risk is. So so far, there's no uh, injury screening being done at the sports home school. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. 
Um, excuse me, maybe I missed it during your presentation, but how did you calculate the uh, injury risk? The injury risk? Yeah. Um, well, I took the cutoff point um, of uh, the four centimeters, which was found by Polisky et al. and Smith et al. Um, that um, actually in the literature, there's different cutoff scores for injury risk that have been uh, established, but this one has uh, been mostly found, so that's why I chose for, for the four centimeters. So if an, uh, a per an participant in this case had more or equal to four centimeters right left uh, difference in the anterior reach direction of the Y balance test. So if he scored, if he had, if he reached, for example, four centimeters further with his right leg in the anterior direction than with his left leg, um, he was considered to have an increased injury risk because it has been shown that the Y balance test is predictive um, for injury risk uh, when a participant has more than four centimeters asymmetry. I think that was yeah? a good question. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Nina. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.